Uh, coming up right now is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up that big old can of whoop ass for you all. Uh, you definitely want to stay tuned for that good information. Just, just great stuff. Uh, anyway, I'll be on tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern time here in the U.S. of A. Uh, so, you know, come on back for that. That's the Grim Leftovers show. Check out the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all the shows coming up throughout the week. And let me just say a little early, happy birthday, Miss Circle. <laughs> Her birthday's tomorrow or whenever it turns midnight over there and. uh, Don, Don Daneland. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Peace. What's it going to be, folks? They're going to have their way with you, or you're going to have their way your way with them. And it won't be an excuse when they do it to you, because we were told that we had to do it to them. The them. Those, those oppressors of any stripe, any place that were coming against us. We were obligated to protect ourselves. It was our responsibility. We were supposed to be looking out in the reality of the world and not be persuaded away and against our better judgment based on an honest look at the world and looked at truthfully. And when we're uh, take an alternative that someone sets up for us and we buy into that, well, we kind of give up not only the responsibility, we've given our consent, and we really don't have a complaint. Now, we do when you finally realize that was a mistake. And if you look real carefully for uh, for all the negative press it gets, the even the codes, the rules, the statutes, they have something to inform us about. If we would just look, when I say mistake, I, my mind quickly went, while well, I'm telling, talking to you, that quickly went to, the UCC regarding rescission. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just saying that there is guidances that we could read and to understand what we really maybe need to do. And I'm not saying that rescission is. I'm just saying that's where my mind went. If you want to see a black and white explanation of certain things in, that are going on that you have a, 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 a opportunity to use if you'll choose so, these tools become powerful in your hands when you start to work them. They will become nothing. It's like a tools in a toolbox. I think tools in a toolbox might be a subject to theft. But there's, because if you're, that's all you are going to do is leave it there and not use it, then they're useless to you as well. And so we have uh, uh, things to think about. At least I think about them. And sometimes I wonder why I think so hard about this kind of stuff. I don't really know why I care sometimes, to uh, tell you the truth. Uh, but there's a reason, supposedly, uh, underneath all this. It's greater than us. And so I kind of look at that part. Otherwise, I really don't have much to say uh, to anybody. And a lot of this just comes from me finding out I couldn't go through. I can choose to do what I want to do. I want to do something that's not going to harm anybody else. And it's going to be some that just happens to be in this world. Someone that wants to get in the way of that. Want to stomp on my uh, stomp on my uh, cereal. Wants to stomp on my cornflakes. And I just wanted to have a nice bowl of cornflakes. And so you have to, that's the reality. I don't know what else to do about that. I can set myself up to be doing what I think I need to do. And I make all the plans and. You know, the best plans of mice. But at any rate, that's what's making me want to go. And then someone wants to interfere. And then you find out they don't have the right. At that point, what are you going to do? Now, what are you going to use as your base? And before I go too far, this is BTW RLM 344. For those of you on post, past, prod, cast, whatever you want to call all that. Whatever you find this in the past... To put the number in and the behind the woodshed, maybe reallibertymedia.com or Real Liberty Media, and see if you can find the blogcaster for this, and it'll have all the links I'll talk about that I don't read from too much. It just gives me a thought process of how things are get told. We're being shown things, uh, and I only see the things I see. There's a whole lot more, I, I guess, that are, that are there. There's certainly a whole lot more than I ever get to to talk about and to tie together. It seems to be the same. It's like we're making, I'm drawing this mandala that Mandalay effect, the mandala <laughs> effect, uh, that you are drying, driving these, if you will, patterns the, in life that keep coming back to a hub. And in this case, that hub is not beauty. That hub has to be these people that want to get in your face and have no authority. And when you, when you start going around, and no matter what path you take and draw, and you come back around, you go to the middle, and you come back out, after a while, it 
describes this the the hub of the problem in this case, and that's that's where we can start focusing on. And so there's lots of these things, at least as the way I conceive them, that are in the world that are hubs of positions of control. That uh, what I've looked at it, they don't ha actually have the control, and we buy into the fact by numerous ways, numerous techniques. Uh, to that thing that's really not supposed to be proper. And so I look at these so-called news as noticed to us and can look around uh, for wh whatever I think I can de um, derive from it, which I ask everyone to do because it gives you more better perceptions of what's up. And so what, what in the, what's in the world working, what's not, all this is just an ongoing uh, analysis for me. And uh, some of these links I get from uh, people I follow on Twitter, which I can't follow too many, just want to remind you, can't follow too many because I've been blocked out of following. I don't know why, and that's okay. The ones I put, chose early were good enough, I suppose, to give me some help. So, uh, But at some point, it's all overwhelming. There's just so much to deal with. And I've told you, some of this stuff I don't really want to uh, get too deep into unless it can go down, it can open up a door that somebody can do something with it. And I'm always encouraged that someone might be there. At least I anticipate someone could be there. And I speak to that potential. We're not going to do it to not... Uh, to do nothing. So I don't care. I don't know. Well, I don't care. I do care to that extent that people think that there's nothing they can do. And it's, it's completely wrong. The fact that you've just decided to buy into the tyranny uh, that's around us everywhere. I don't even know what to say. It, you may be able to put yourself in a place where you're uh, cloistered away within a context of what you have now constructed around yourself is a, a, a place of uh, contentment. Uh, but that's n not really being free. That's just placing yourself into a finite place that you believe is not addressable. Now, where I come from, that's what I tried to do a couple times, and they always came out to bother me. So then I reversed it, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to have to address these, these usurpers. And then also we went into the we go into mining, uh, mining claims, mining law, that stuff. Uh, again, I've done that. I've been born into doing that. It's just part of the family thing. So that part wasn't a problem. It was that when we got into it, then all of a sudden we got more people trying to trespass against clearly uh, stated black and white. So to not address, I was, I wanted to be content to go just do that, go off in the in the brush, go do the mining, uh, make I get the money in the bank, if you will, hard work. Uh, nothing's free there for sure, uh, but it's uh, honest living without having to deal with anybody uh, an interference. And we were supposed to be protected, and found out that the one who's supposed to protect you doesn't. And so another reality. and But there, it's still there that they must do that. And so we can buy into the fact of our hopelessness or our helplessness, or we can say, wait a minute, someone's starting to trespass my contentedness, my happiness, as we heard the, the adulteration in the Declaration of Independence, for those of you that uh, read that in the United States of America. And so we know that's property, and what am I talking about? I'm talking about a mining claim is property. So uh, trying to make be content in the world, and there's a trespasser. I don't know how many times in life that's happened. That's a reality. I can't stop the the, the Genghis Khan in, in my life. I mean, just, they're out there. How many, however often I try to position myself uh, to do that. So uh, then I found out that the entirety of the government was this way. We, we yes, I th did think about the, completely oblivious to that point for a long time in my life until one day I'm threatened with my life. Just like you hear people getting gunned down. I can't say I was the first, but I'm one of the first that survived because right after that, months later, people are being shot dead. When they All of a sudden, this thing came on us. When was that? Way back in the 80s? So this has been a long, long run here of uh, the truth, the truth that government's not going to secure you to do anything, and they're supposed to be doing it, and there's a way to get at that, but everyone's been uh, the uh, cockistocracy rises to the top. So we're in the face of all this. How do you find the ideas, that, the principles the, with which you're going to really exist in this condition that's really not peaceful? But the evidence of its peaceful prop, uh, proposition and its potential sits right there to be done. And m seemingly nobody really wants to pull it off. When that violation happens, we are creatures of complaint rather than principled action. And so I'd come every week uh, and to talk to y'all, put it out there. Uh, I, I thank you uh, again, Spreaker, Spreaker to uh, Grammy Mary. Thank you for allowing that. Just one more thing for us to go put stuff up. It gets transferred over to UC um, to uh, YouTube. UCY TV puts it on YouTube. Jules, thank you for what you do there. Uh, Sound Minds, you're doing the simulcast. Um, 
uh, uh, the crew over there, thank you very much for your interest. Uh, and um, I hope last week was a little bit of an insight. Again, it's just a nugget of, of information. You really have to expand it, but it's not that hard once you start getting down the, what I consider to be a more proper thought processing of this thing that we're up against, that you, you just can't get away from being oppressed about, uh, and there's no reason for it all. And it's getting worse, and I saw that coming too. So I've been trying to anticipate all that for you. It sounds it sounds a bit uh, too much in a way. It sounds like it's uh, uh, some hyperbola, but as you see, it's not. It, as you start really looking at it, don't don't you know, pull the pull the wool from your own eyes, please, uh, and you'll see that. And normalization of ignorance again. Uh, thank you for your reposts. And uh, any anybody else, just in case, I haven't been back over to deprogram.org, but yeah, periodically I see I, doing searches that you come up. So thank you all, whoever mind I can to to, to listen, uh, then to consider and then to turn around and look around to see the wrong that needs to be right around you because that has to, that's what's going to have to happen. Otherwise, those with the plan, this is the same thing I've been saying for forever. Those with the plan are going to win. And the plan typically is not in your best interest. And it wouldn't be in any one of our best interests. And so looking at the news, the notice, the things that people bring up, uh, gives me another insight to come to you to exp just as subject matter areas to talk about to say here look at this and look at it in a certain way to derive from it the things that you actually will need not hear and maybe not even something you can do for your do anything about but you can take these principles and apply them directly into other places and be aware really be aware of things not be awoke you know, woke is a woke is a joke folks that's all the pills those are all an other type of pharmaceutical uh, so get off all that stuff Notwithstanding, I say that Matrix is not a movie. Get off of the pills part, all right? That's just not where you need to go. We need to get away from that, and we need to be responsible and not be addicted to anything. You know, maybe maybe being free if we help, but you're not free. You're a part of a system. Uh, you That's just by how it works, and uh, there's nothing I can do about that. There's really nowhere to go outside of systems, which you can show, at least my conceptualization of how this actually works in a land in the United States of America that provided that people did have property and the system was there neutrally to protect those interests. Whether or not we agree, we enjoy that right now is not the point. That it's there to be forced back is the point. And it won't be forced back. The theft of that won't be brought back until you do it. You've got to keep that. That's the keeping that republic thing. And so, but where do we go for our principles? Where do we go for what we're supposed to know? And how do we trust in it and this and that? And I've also said some of the things you learn is you listen to the enemy so-called. Listen to those that are violating you or, or have given telegraphing the head fakes that may show that they want to violate you. Listen to what they admit to, say, confess, or whatever gives you the an indication. You qualify whether or not it's a deception, and when you find out it's not, you can take that to the bank against their position if you choose to. You can take it to the condition to expose the larger world, if you will. And in this case, I'm going to go to the larger world. This thing that seems so far away from everybody, uh, you can't deal with a lot of this. But it's, uh, again, this is a mirror, a reflection of the society where we can find common hubs, threads of power connection. Those that have organized constraints and plans built in that you then find violate principles, not your opinion, the principles of establishment for certain types of, uh, certain ways of life, or if you will, societies, given if you don't have a triggering on the word. And again, I speak here on very um, neutral generalizations of these words. If I was to find a specific subject matter that where the word society became a, an issue, you would definitely lock that down a lot more specific. And, and But that's not what I do behind the woodshed here. I just can't. But So we have this general thing. We look around and we, we see the militaristic aspect of the world in lots of forms, actually. Just the way, just war, people warring people against each other. And it, it, that's the obvious one. The one more subtle one I talk about is like the one inside the United States where everything that you couldn't tell, and you're not going to find the official admission to this, why I went to the Libra Code that admits you have to know them when you seize them. You don't uh, take their word for it. And they don't have to tell you either. So, again, instructive guidance with the Libra Code. We see a, militar, a military control inside a place that wasn't supposed to have it. Then you have the obvious one, like 9-11, that brought it on. And what the plan was for why that brought, brought, got brought on, I think it was missed by most everybody. Just, I mean, short of the complaining, noticing it's happening, 
And I don't think not many. I don't think many people put it together. It was a plan afoot, and then it, for me, it was underneath the existing military condition. So again, as I told you, it wasn't a surprise. 9/11 was uh, they went and done it. They went and done it to make the next steps that you've now lived through for almost 20 years, and we are crickets to that. And I've called this out as we've gone uh, the the benchmark points on and on and on. So. Now we're into the full-on press, uh, and they're after the press. That's your, I was saying, I mentioned that it's your, that's your communication lines. And uh, again, this is not to embrace anybody as um, the, the truth or the, the fact of the, the a side. There's no side here. It's trying to look objectively. So when I mentioned this guy named Assange, I'm not saying I support, I don't even know what to do. I know nothing about WikiLeaks. I just know what they do, and I know who he was part of it, and I know he is considered the press in the world. He's got that view, and so we're looking at a condition. I'm not in necessarily in support, and then I'm not in not support. So this is not an analysis of where I put my, at least my position would be. This is taking the news of the world that can affect the world if you can find a control point that has the power to do so, the organizational power to do so. And it's why you'll hear me periodically mention similar connections um, in my discussions here to give you to show you that they're there without getting too deep in a lot of this. But Assange's lawyers links the U.S. government and Bill Bro uh, Browder uh, raises questions. Uh, this was came through um, a link again. I got this through Twitter and uh, looked at the looked at the story. And this uh, lady, a reporter, apparently long-standing. Uh, not too thrilled about what's going on with Assange. I'm not either because of the the treatment. All right, this is a, a inhumane treatment, no real due process, and he's gonna the extradition has completely been decided to be va invalid because the United States and you Americans better listen. You, United States Americans better listen to this. Uh, your is political your political system your prison system your justice system is inhumane if you didn't understand it before and not just to say it's inhumane it's been a judge by another peoples that this system is inhumane and they didn't extradite that they're mistreating Assange now should be your problem because of that not whether you like WikiLeaks or Assange or he's press or he's not or any of that stuff what's causing that is what I start to look at because What's causing that, when you look deeper enough, actually addresses a whole lot of other things. And I keep mentioning this, this lawsuit in 2013 we did. It ends up being connected back over to there as well. Because there's certain hubs of power interference and construction uh, of the world that continue to play a part that no one seems to get deep enough to focus on. This story gets very much closer. They don't get to the point, but they get closer. And so this is a story where you see millionaires, uh, uh, movers and shakers that can influence government. They want to say Putin did it. This Browder story is really the whole thing. In fact, it ties back to the Russians to make them look like something, and they're not. And it was an internal, uh, I don't want to use the word coup, but it, it's an internal deception going on to the United States. So connected and influential are these people. They had laws made. All right, so then it comes out that uh, WikiLeaks and Assange outed this thing, or tried to, or they did with the information. And so this researcher here, Lu Lucy Commissar, interesting name, starts with a K, Commissar, at any rate, uh, just interesting, means nothing maybe, uh, but goes through and explains to you the Euro a short little snippet of the European court system and explains the defense attorneys, supposed defense attorneys, in that system relative to so supposedly defending defending um, Assange. Now I have serious problems on all this from long time I've been I've been posting uh, tweets that there are things that I know and England is pretty it's, it's close enough to the American system that there are remedies that work across the pond okay there's just certain things that could be done and there's just things generally that work around the world that ought to be done and I think law legal 101 even says challenge the jurisdiction where you can and challenge it anyway and you dare I don't ever see that happen in, well I can't say ever but boy those times are very slim and far in between and it ends up being the very first thing I start to look at even if there's a possibility they, that there is a, an authority, jurisdiction, in multiple levels here, I would still challenge it just to make the record of that. Uh, this is how you start to really um, make something happen. So this reporter, you've got to read through this. It explains a little bit of the, the, the 
the system, the legal system, the barristers, the solicitors, their relationship, and who the players are that get assigned these cases are attorneys. Correct? We all know that's the defense. What this report shows you is that the attorneys in the UK are actually defending the United States as well on other issues against other countries, on other things that are all ultimately tied together if you're looking at this as a, from a strategic standpoint and economic attacks and, and getting pe uh, undermining governments and all this, that you're doing this kind of thing, but that one government's attacking another in the legal spectrum, but they're using these attorneys. Well, when you go, now let's go a little bit deeper because it doesn't touch this in this report. You're going to find out that uh, these, uh, we might call them households out in the United States, they call them chambers over there in the UK. Uh, these, uh, they may be at different chambers, but they're all interrelated. They all interrelate by their subject matters. They all work without really any much scrutiny, apparently. But more importantly to that, they are all part of the International Bar Association as well, which is the American Bar Association is tied into. And so what's going, what this woman, the woman late Lucy, is exposing is this conflict of interest underneath the Assange case, which is really a political thing, which I looked at and said, you all need to understand how this how this part takes you down why a lot of you go into the courts and this happens backwards to you i mean you just like now we're going oh i want it you show me the prove me the jurisdiction you ask the judge and four times you ask that you get beat down pretty soon they'll be killing you i mean pretty soon it's coming to the point when uh, you may not be killed in the room they'll be moving you out and you'll be gone because you're just going to be the squeaky wheel and there's no more scruple to stop from getting rid of their squeaky wheels all right, this is not yet here. We're almost there. It's what's coming down. Well, I'm trying to explain to you how you make it so you don't do that to yourself. And so here this story explains this system, explains the attorneys in it. I'm going to add, remember, they're all part of the International Bar. gets us back over also. I don't care if they're a, a, a barrister or a solicitor. They're an, they're an attorney, part of a membership that has a global structure. And this it, the story here talks about and the Browder whole the Browder thing is a whole other study. It's fascinating. Uh, my most of my information comes from a documentary. I have to assume that it was right. Uh, what they were, what the even just by question and answer, what was coming out, what was displayed. I can't remember the name of that d documentary. It exposes a major influence inside the government that's not Putin, which would be a great maneuver to cast dispersions on someone else while you cover yourself. So in this is this international intrigue stuff, but it's not just intrigue like myth. This is what I look at is the mechanisms by how they're destroying you. And these, crew, these attorneys, are, these bar members are critical to doing this. They become the focal, a focal point in the world. When you say rule, I said rule O law and democracy, this is a catchphrase for they're coming to tear you out. They're going to put, they're going to get the future that they want, not you. And they've got, it, they want to, don't talk, they want to blame it on Putin. And I'm not going to say that he doesn't have any influence or Russia doesn't. They're all the spy versus spy, folks. But, but when you see this interplay here and you're looking at something within the context of um, the government, the UK, the judges, so-called, they're part of the bar, are supposed to be neutral, and you're looking at they're supposed to be making a check and balance to make justice. They're complicit in not outing what the attorneys, the defense attorneys, don't do that I, uh, I can identify ought to have happened if you are trying to really defend somebody. Now, where do I get that? came from my initial... My initial seeing, uh, how I got involved with realizing, as I've told you before, the child services was a hub point of tra human trafficking, of child abuse, back in the 2000s, okay? So this Epstein thing is just, a, it's just an extension of all that. It's been going on, folks. There's nothing new. But I found it in a, in a space, in a spot, and I was able to extrapolate that all the way in case, if you, if you haven't heard it, all the way to UK as well. Through where? Through uh, Pennsylvania. The Sandusky thing. Where did I get that? Through those two judges, those youth judge decisions, which outed that youth group that they were putting everybody in. All right, there's a there's a methodology behind this, and once you see it, it, it just you just realize what's going to happen. It's not even a question now. These players are inside doing that. That's the critical part. My introduction to looking at judges that would make uh, not. Um, 
that would cause a change of evidence to happen or to not allow evidence or to not be the, the standing in the gap, as uh, my good friend Vinny would say, standing the gap. They don't do that judicially. Is an indication that you can be taken down everywhere, wherever the rule, O oh, law, and democracy exists. Is in this story, it calls up the problem with Assange. Now, that means we either have someone in Assange who is in with that because he never ever complains on things that when you look at what's supposed to happen in the in your when you all go to court and you think you're going to do a jurisdictional challenge and do it wrong like I've explained to you and then you didn't do it right you lose you get beat down you start making the record more right they can't do that not quite yet right that he's not doing those simple things he ought to be doing even if his attorney didn't and he doesn't complain when they don't uh, for instance it was his job his duty when he went back to that bail hearing after they yanked him out of that Ecuadorian uh, 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 whatever uh, whatever they called that I don't remember now uh, the embassy if uh, I guess uh, and see and then Lenin uh, I think Lenin's getting his karma now in Ecuador but anyway against uh, attacking a citizen in their own embassy uh, so they pulled uh, Assange out when Assange went back to the bail hearing jumping case not the extradition he was required to put up a defense and he failed completely didn't make one and everyone on the outside said it was all injustice. And I'm saying, where's your defense? You need to make the record. Then he could have opened up his own can of whoop-ass. He didn't. Why? Now, he's either in on it then, or he, for all the intelligence and genius and good cause and all the whatever he is, he's an ignorant dupe. Because he doesn't know at all what to do. And I'm not going to say he's in a, any kind of shape right now, because after a few years in, 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 in the little room, you get kind of dingy. But that doesn't take away. You still have I, I've, you still have a spirit in you that can come out to at least object, and it, it do, you don't hear it. So this story is critical to understand how this works through the bar associations worked in. I'm not making a decision on whether he's a uh, complicit in doing a different type of an agenda against. Uh, bad, I would say just simply it would be bad precedent against an existing president that says precedent that says it can't happen, the extradition. Or he is completely out of any mind on how to make, as I would call them, collateral attacks. When you don't even have to go there, you, that's one of the angles. But actually doing defenses or meeting your burdens within the law that they have you. When they have you in chains, what do you still say? He's, none of that's happening. That causes my question on this whole thing. Um, these are easily, easily seen that they're failures. Why aren't they happening is my problem with this. Why it doesn't happen with you all wherever you go within the context, whether it's judicial or administrative, is my problem with you, not you. It's your problem that you're developing for you, and you're going to get hurt because this control is almost absolute. The only way, the only reason why it's not absolute is because it can still get out. And yet everyone around Assange, everyone, doesn't challenge the attorneys or the court. And now I'm bringing up the idea, a habeas corpus, and I think it's still valid in, in, in the UK. It's questionable in the United States, although I've seen them run through a couple of them. They're still valid in the UK that someone who sees an injustice of the re, an unlawful restraint of liberty has the right to enter in that nobody... With all their notoriety and all their access or not, or friendship or knowledge or perceived genius or not, no one is making a counterattack to check that system of complicity. And this is where we now start to see a different complexion going on, why you have to get together and understand what's going on. And now, I was involved with something like that. I thought we had a bunch of people that would work together when any of us, one of us went in, and this is a, a, quite a few decades ago we would have the other people to file paper like this. And we I've done it a few times when a friend goes into into jail and we're not making any we're not criminals, so they're getting us wrong. I can file a habeas and a lot of times they just kick somebody out the next morning, early in the morning when there's no rides available, if you will. Right? Because they don't have the right to hold you. But no one challenges that. 
I'm not saying that would work here. I'm saying that it makes a record. It makes pe- more people can jump in in the fray if you really feel that there's an injustice going on. Whatever you feel about Assange or WikiLeaks or anything of what he's done, you're watching the the underlying, the underbelly of the system of the rule of law and democracy but taking you out through this. It has nothing to do with Assange at all. You're looking at this woman here has made a report that explains to you the the a conflict of interest in the system that we, the people, are supposed to really be witnessing and checking. In fact, when you see injustices, it's, you don't even have to do the habeas corpus. You can write letters, um, Make I guess I'd make them a little bit stronger than just a letter, uh, of observation of injustice being done. And there's a lot of power in people to do things. You don't have to get so so detailed in how this works either but you do have to say certain things and so I just wanted to point out this thing with Assange that someone has now gone in and showed the conflict of interest of the defense working for the prosecution and the prosecution uh, and the defense working for the prosecution happens to be international and attacking other people internationally and if you're not concerned with that well I don't know about you as far as a group of people that think they're free I don't know about you uh, this is okay. So we're back to this. I want to focus in not just that there's this complicity, but it, there's an organization that has allowed it. It's called the International Bar Association. The agreement of the American bar with it is all considered uh, consistent, and the international jumping across the pond for the UK, uh, I think it was a solicitor to, maybe it was a barrister, I don't remember, it doesn't matter, to work with the United States government to go attack someone in a third country shows you it's international. All right, so you miss this thing if you start fighting at the uh, the point where the paper gets issued or the point of the cop and only, and you don't look forward through that. You're gonna you're walking yourself into a trap. And uh, for the life of me, folks, I don't understand why there's n- not a bigger dust up on this. This story explains it at least. It makes more sense, as I said on the Twitter, uh, responding yes, conflict of interest and judicial complicity. The judicial complicity makes more sense here because failures of defense is not asserted alone. And no complaint indicates Assange is a player. And if the bar uh, asks conflict of interest, then if it is the conflict of interest of the Bar Association, then he's more an ignorant dupe, including the crickets around him. All right, so this is we do this to ourselves. We should be protecting him, not because we like him, but because there's gross violations of law, there, and it's clearly against the precedent that's already been made in the UK. You have to now look at this, and there's a two there's a two paths to take here. He's either complicit himself with this, and there's a bigger thing going on, another precedent that's going to come into attack, really make a bigger precedent to attack everywhere internationally, or he doesn't know. He's ignorant. Like a mo- most everybody I meet, we're all and we're all ignorant to some extent on this stuff. Except I try to show you that there's some tools to be able to get yourself along and to expose the weaknesses that they don't want you to know about. It's what I talk about all the time. Most of you think that I'm talking above your head. I'm not. I'm talking about you're not making a thing in your life that says this is gonna. This is actually a serious thing. I need to put my mind on how that works and then think about what I'm I'm saying on what sense that would make to address call it out. If you want to call it out, this is what we call it out. And and so, uh, anyway, the failures here called my mind to it. No different than the failure in 2000 on a, a, a child services case of the judge to do something. A failure of adhering to the rule to give advantage to the state in an ostensibly neutral position was exactly the same thing. The failure of responsible defense or judicial standing in the gap is is the silence that I think miss people miss. And if you did miss that, then you're still giving. You may not agree with it. You may think it's bad, but you still give a measure of uh, what would it be um, confidence to that system that it's okay instead of calling them out. You've got to call them out. See, it won't. You could be wrong in calling them out, but if you have a foundation that you believe, prob- have probable cause to believe it's wrong, they can't dismiss that so easily. And in this world now, we have millions of people that could be looking in. That if they understood the power of this and they understood their responsibility to back up the truth, 
we could become that force to be reckoned with. All right, so the people, not in, I got this. Is, I got to be careful here. In the UK, the Queen is the head of state. In the United States, I know it doesn't look like it, but it's the people that are the head of state. And we tend to buy into a lesser status, and the and the people in government are just the govern the head of government in the state. And there's these checks and balances which I think we miss. That when you see, I look at again the silence thing. There's a silent. There's a lack of response where there ought to be some. If I was gonna get into a, a fight for my life, folks, and think about this for yourself, put yourself in a son's shoes, and you're in the fight for your life. You know what's after you. He's, a, he's presumed innocent here, folks. So you presume yourself innocent, and then you're facing this 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 criminality. Would you fight for your life, or would you take it with, with a whimper, like I see him doing? When the attorneys didn't do things that they ought to do, wouldn't you at least call it out for people? I, I, I think you would. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I can't. I don't know your, your what people do. I don't know the good Samaritan in y'all. I don't know the the, the dutiful uh, being that you might be to keep to to want to address the victims of to vindicate victims of injustice. I, I don't know about all that in everybody, but this is what I see. And so I spent again. I spent so much time more than my mind is a flash on how to explain this. I just get into how this stuff works, and just one point after the next keeps going, and I got so much more to cover. All right, so you forget forget about the dynamic here. Look at, well, not the dynamic, the condition. Look at what's not going on that you think ought to go on. Look at everyone watching the peanut gallery, not doing a thing and having power to do all kinds of things, actually. Interject yourself in the, the real probable cause to see that a violation is going on and that maybe the, well, you just believe because of the facts that you lay out, not your opinion of the facts, the facts that these are, well, habeas was available, a complaint was available, the judicial uh, obligation and duty to stand in the gap to keep a presumption of innocence running on the extradition side uh, failed at every point. And I'm coming concerned that injustice is going on right before and there's no remedy for that. You don't even have to file the habeas. If you add those things into the habeas, now they have to start answering because now the burden is better flipped on them than just a letter. Once you make the right, proper complaint, the burden flips to the state now. And I know it's like going to the people that, the, the, those that have to, uh, that keep you in your cage. But it, for me, it becomes the public record now that everyone gets to see. And if they mistreat that, everyone gets to see that. And that creates even more letters and more suits. Then you start picking up people, uh, the people that are making the decisions and and doing it wrongly, they become part of what? That felony and that extortion against the people. And I keep talking about this presumption of innocence. We don't seem to enjoy it anymore. I say assert it anyway. At least get it on the record. And if you don't think it's important, as I just thought about that, I can move on. It's all important. Former Brazilian President Lula da Silva released from prison following judge's order. There was a court case in Brazil and they said you can't be put in jail while you're waiting your appeal. And the court came, Brazil came back and said, because of the presumption, I'm paraphrasing, you can get the order, you can read it. Because of the presumption of innocence, that's right. It's unconstitutional to keep people over while they're appealing to get what? What the United States uh, Supreme Court said is, if you die when you're going there, it's injustice. We didn't fulfill our obligation to, the, to, your, to your remedy, and therefore you cannot be charged. You're dead at that point. In this case, the Brazilian court, under the rule of law and democracy, found what? Your presumption of innocence does mean something. And if you're in a place that it doesn't, you can bring this out and you can say, hey, they, they recognize it in a third world banana republic. No disrespect to Brazilians here. you got to put them in a position, though. you got to throw them out. you got to throw your condition to make it as best as you can. And I would throw that in there about the third, because what you're doing is you're talking about that exceptional country that's supposed to be the highest standard, right? And so you use this news and you put it inside a context of a presentation where you are having people violate these principles. What have I said about this presumption of innocence with respect to a neutral standard or an innocence, non-attached standard of any status? If you thought I'm joking about this, a 
gentleman who's convicted was released hours after this judge's order that included inside it that the the police have to do it very quickly release him see this used that used to holding you when you had a right uh, of free being free notwithstanding the judgment notwithstanding the process ongoing it was a very via, big violation serious serious violation we've lost that now, you apply this decision back over to Assange and to point out that there was a whole lot of things that ought to be done to test the condition, that they're not. And I think we start to have a better international word in our mouth. And we start as people moving as the witness we need to be against the established crime that's gone into the system and the caucusocracy that's risen up that pre pretends to be all these nice and, and warm and just things. And so I... Again, these, I'm, am I care, do I really care about Lula? No, not really. But it's corruption. He's a caucusocracy. He's probably, well, I can't say he did it. Under the conditions of the suit, the first appeal says, or the first, uh, up to the first appeal says he was convicted. I don't know the politics of all that. All I know is that when it come under review, it embarrassed the rule of law and democracy to not afford uh, ultimate uh, uh, presumption of innocence. No, the whole system is it's not judicial, it's political, but it doesn't, it's not, not here nor there, that discussion, for the proof that finding the position of innocence and working the presumption and the violation against this is a very powerful place internationally as well. Let me get you back again. I can tell you all this stuff all around and around as I think about it. It doesn't occur to me until I start talking. Kansas versus Colorado, I just mentioned it brief, briefly last week, I think, or week before. Hadn't talked about it for a long time ago. 1907, you look right in there, eventually you'll find that the Supreme Court said, as we always look at international law, we're always receptive and, uh, and, compl and compliant with uh, inter international law and how it works on all this. Uh, so this is powerful. Doesn't mean much. You know, maybe you're not from Brazil. With the presumption of innocence, what I looked at, I didn't know this was coming out. Again, it came out at the end of the article. I had to go read through the whole article to see what relevance it might even have because it doesn't really have much. To me, it's just a bunch of criminal politicians getting caught up. And there's a political motive for it. And yet, here we are, the judiciary so-called. It's so embarrassed that it, it violates the presumption of innocence. What have I said you may be down to? The presumption of innocence, certainly where you haven't made, or where you can argue that the, there was no um, lawful attachment, and your due process. What is sufficient due process? The absence of the due process in the Assange case for what a, remedies and avoidance alone say we have a big problem. Houston, talking to Texas here. Not really. Talking to everybody, right? We have, we have a mission control. We have a mission failure. And people are going to get hurt bad because of that. The O-rings are going to blow. Right? Well, they're not. The people are the O-rings. They should have blown a long time ago. There really are checks and balances. I'm not saying that they're going to be regarded. I'm saying that if they're not regarded, if you have enough people with the right mind of looking at the clear, the critical thinkers, and the acting, the, the engagers... The, this thing starts to turn over very quickly, I believe. Well, one of the hubs is the international bar, the American bar, these attorneys that have run your life down, uh, very few of which actually do what they need to do. Uh, very few really have the right statement. And when they do have a, a better thought, they rarely bring out the real point. And yet, someone like myself that will point that out is 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 obviously not correct what do i know what do i tr well, how much do i know well i'm a i'm supposed to be a witness of the crimes of a government that was supposed to be in a limited capacity not committing crimes that's my obligation as well more importantly i've got processes that if you're going to ignore it and they come affect me they will affect me advers adversely and i won't be able to def defend myself like you're seeing on the streets where you get shot okay so um again this the importance of this this story in brazil is the the court returned that it's unconstitutional to have someone in jail while their case is being appealed because that process of judicial review of the condition did not fulfill itself. Completely consistent with the fact that you die in the United States and then they have to bring it all back to nothing and uh, no one gets anything. It's, uh, they didn't fulfill their obligation and duty to, to justice itself. And I know it sounds maybe oxymoronic. I'm saying that these people are criminals uh, and they're going to do justice. The point is, I don't see it that way when I say it to you that way. I see it as an embarrassment. 
And so they have to, they got to keep your confidence. How unjust would it be when someone died that they go ahead and keep the conviction and go after his estate? They, they, they're not going to do that. It's after your chickens, folks. Don't mess with your chickens. Hat tip to something Grimner, I think, stumbled on. Pretty funny. Uh, not so funny, but in that case, what he did it was funny. Uh, don't mess with the don't mess with the people's chicken. And so this is what they did. They find out they're going to mess with the people's chicken. They got to back off. I've said in an international occupation in an occupied territory, don't piss off the natives. That's the number one rule. Make that whole thing transparent. And they, you hear the word being used all the time. The invasions are transparent. Why? Because it makes nothing but a whole lot of sense. If you can't see your occupation or your occupier, uh, then he's safe. If you won't call out the defects in something that would bring justice, they win. On one side, I'm really sad, and I'm dismayed at another without sad at all. Uh, looking at these conditions, we're doing all of this to ourselves, and we, the people really do have a power. Why that's not, uh, especially people that have some time on their hands, why that isn't a, a common theme of help, uh, uh, engagement, um, I don't know, finding some things to give people tools to let them work on it because you can't solve someone else's problem. You can only offer, this is partly my problem, I, and I couldn't, don't have my, a left life to do it. I can't turn the, the screwdrivers, the, the, the wrenches myself. I can just say, here, they're in, they're in this box, and they're here to use, and you need to use these, or uh, you need to use them until we find out maybe that there's a different thing to need to use. And sometimes you do have to open, go to that adjustable open-end wrench. It's not proper, but sometimes you have to go to the tool that's maybe not quite for the job, but it does get the job done while you're figuring out what other thing you need to do in either constructing a thing you need or destructing, con deconstructing something that's harming you. And so here's a, I was talking about the child welfare, uh, CSD, CPS, what do you want to call them? Again, what brought me into realizing, I had done some study, about a decade of study before I was able to see, and doing these policies, folks, doing these rules, these rules of evidence, seeing what's supposed to go on in a situation, whether it's administrative, judicial, and realizing those things weren't being done. And that's almost, it, it's transparent to most everybody because most people are overwhelmed to begin with, especially if you're in your own cases. This is why you've got to step back a little bit first. Well, I think this came through Gary, Gary L., in fact, I think it did directly from him to me, acknowledging a, this condition I talked to you about, about the child services being like organized crime. Someone else also took that journey, apparently. He did it just a four or so, five years after I did. And uh, what got me, all I could say, folks, is wow, wow, wow. I don't, and, I, and the question wasn't a question, it was a direction. Do I need to read this story? Uh, well, I had read the story. The point was, this guy found, I, uh, he did better, one step better than me, but he found what I found, folks, following footsteps. We didn't know each other. He did it five years delayed from what I did. He comes up with all the same stuff. What starts me looking was the silence of the proper judicial processes that are supposed to go on the proper judicial proceedings, like, let's say, rules of evidence and not tampering with the record, one of the big ones. He finds at the near the middle of his study or that that's what goes on in this judicial system that the Bar Association operates. Your certified records are tampered with. No, there's lots of us that have the opinion that's what goes on, but I've told you, if you know that's going, you have to protect against that. Okay, you have to, that's the war. And don't think that that's not a civil war, the transformed civil war in these courtrooms, that's where they put it. But your civil war is against that government still. It never stopped, folks. Anyway, getting back to the real killer for me, not a killer because I'm still living, Browden's dead. Almost everybody that searched into this is dead. But, oh, uh, by the way, folks, doesn't look like Epstein killed himself. All right? This guy, Browden, I think that's his name. I'm getting confused now. Bowen, excuse me, not Browder was the other guy. Bill Bowen takes the same journey four or five years after I did, finds everything, and then he did one thing more, folks. He was he was a federal investigator, no less. He had the, the technique, the tools I didn't have, and I didn't know how to broach it to get the aid, working my way into an agency to get the word from the you know from the horse's mouth, so to speak. He was he was able to figure out how to get some people from inside the child services. And I call it. Uh, Child services, like adult services, relevant relative to uh, child abuse and sex trafficking that becomes so much in the news today, 
it was it's been for a long long time under the skin transparent to anybody that this guy finds the same thing i only could say wow 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 folks this guy knows he found what i found he found victims it's it's um, horrendous what goes on it's horrendous that a system inside your country and this is glo this is going to be wherever the rule of law and democracy enforces the rights of child i told you that's a crime uh, this is the same thing as the uh, human rights. It's uh, subject to the government. These, uh, the uh, human, the child services, uh, the is protected by systems that don't follow the uh, actual rules of the law. They call it the rule of law. They, this system is set up as an organized criminal syndicate inside what appears to be legitimate government. What you all complain about, but but few have the ability or or a fortitude and persistence to follow. This gentleman named Bill Bowen uh, did, and now it said he's dead, but it said he died by natural causes. But when I did some research on that, his sister came to say, no, this looks like it's natural causes. And then she said, but we have to wait for the report. And I don't find any sub subsequent report about the official report. And so, uh, I, and I don't know, maybe Gary was uh, sending this off just to let me know again, here's another evidence. You get involved with this, folks. You're not probably here. For, you, you, your, your spot on the world is not here for very long. Whatever the reason is, he's not here. Numbers of other people that tried to explain uh, this thing over time are not here. I'm still talking to you, and I don't know why, to tell you the truth. They, they dealt with me, but I think somehow they knew I didn't have maybe the connections. I got what I had, the evidence they got, and there was no no be a follow up from me. But it didn't remove my insight, and it didn't remove that today I'm able to take the very thing that called my attention to a problem that I had no no no, call, no idea was there and apply it to something like Assange, completely different. Although there's abuse, there's trafficking going on. It's a different style. In the time that Epstein, who didn't kill himself, Epstein had help, folks. One way or the other, there's help there. It's the same stuff. And so, I get, what I'm saying, I look at these things and I see it a little differently. I'm just looking at things of an experience that can repeat itself. I don't care where we, what skullduggery we look at. It is sitting in there to be a very high probability and possibility of action. And we watch with all the power of calling it out and we remain silent. Why? I'm not much, even though I, I do some of the things, the tags, like, you know, Epstein didn't kill himself in the Twitter, I only really do that where it looks like someone has some information to actually go beyond the Epstein thing and attack, go after the organized criminal syndicate that even this gentleman Bill Bowen found. I couldn't believe how consistent his finding was as mine. I never knew the gentleman. In fact, I was I was taken out uh, before I think about before he gets started in doing his own check. And so this is not, this is something that needs to be stopped, not just talked about. Uh, the closest we just got potentially was this ABC video of the woman saying they had the, uh, um, I don't remember her name. Uh, Excuse me, names don't stick with me too much. I can go find it if I need it. Or, or Amy Rorick. At any rate, she's uh, complaining that she had this story, like she's looking for some Pulitzer or something about uh, outing this, and then she kept quiet uh, based on the fact that the information they had about this Epstein thing three years ago wasn't uh, certified as credible by ABC, the same company that will tell you that Sirius in Tennessee, notwithstanding. Uh, then how this thing works they blame finger somebody that moved to CBS as the staffer that leaked that and then finding out that by her statement and she's presumed innocent here she didn't leak it the insider is still over there and now you start looking at the whole of ABC which is owned by Disney and you're looking at well here's where this here's a hub of, of deceit here's a hub of, of uh, bribery of, of, of agreement uh, that that any one of these people can vindicate the victims as I have another tag myself my hashtag I put in vindicate the victims by presenting this stuff now open source since it didn't meet ABC standards that they won't is a very important turn here that needs to be looked at very se severely that I would support where I necessarily maybe wouldn't say I'd say Epstein's done 
it's you're gonna you're gonna be distracted away or not get focused on and not focused on anybody you're looking so far away from the actual people that may have some information on those that still exist to do this because that thing didn't go away because Epstein did whether he's alive or dead well connected billionaire hard to believe At any rate it's still going on and so enough there I, uh, my hats off to the late Bill Bowen. Uh, I could not believe how much he ran real consistent with me. I guess I, I guess some forever you're looking to make sure uh, you you found what you found because there's not many evidences around. When you take that, which I say, Gary, the uh, the, the the path less traveled, <laughs> the road less traveled. You take that, and it's really no one around. And every one of us has to take that if we expect to do anything anymore and if we don't it, the oppressor the oppression the occupation whether or not you're a dupe it's more likely when you are or a player you're going to get played because there's a bigger play going on and so we have to really take an objective stance tap back really start looking and I this article I was telling you before points out these attorneys whatever the chambers are and all that interaction it's an international uh, legal uh, immoral as far as I can tell uh, cabal that controls your life across the globe. That when people are uh, feel inside there's a real injustice and start searching it, you, like I've told you, if you get in a path, the real path, when you get on that, if I can call it the righteous path, you will come to the same stinking abyss, given you start your process on the truth of a wrong. And this is just another guy that did that. Like I've told you, I failed because I didn't, I, w I couldn't bring this out. But I could tell you as we went, you know that I'm on record such that they're available. Uh, how this thing goes, how it went, we're up to Epstein now. Uh, now it comes back in 2009, there was someone that tracked down internal to the United States system. And they used the rights of child to do all this. And the system was wired to make this, let the state win. And it's there's also money involved with it, but it's on a different type of level uh, that... Uh, my, I'll just remind, I remind you about this. What they comment in this story about you know, child services, and they touch base on the runaway, finally came to it in the last pane of the video I saw. He's only got 26 minutes of video that they find they found from this guy who was going to come out with a documentary himself. Um, the, that he brings up runaways. What he doesn't bring up, and he brings up lots and lots of pictures of unknown runaways. I told you what I, my findings was is those are the ones that get put into service. If they're not dead, I mean, if they're if they're not um, uh, um, uh, disappeared, and there's lots of that. There's also ones that stay inside that use it as a way house, if you will, to go out and do it, uh, do the trafficking. They're old enough, and that's the only life they know because they've been groomed to do it. So they go out and then they come back. As we read that story, it's, this is all consistent. To have someone, I guess, come back through and find uh, this, I couldn't fi believe how consistent his findings was. Uh, it, it's that obvious, I guess, when you see it. Yeah, we were standing shoulder to shoulder. We are, whether he's still here or not. We are standing shoulder to shoulder at the same stinking abyss of child services, of child abuse, child trafficking. It goes to the highest places in the land. It goes to the lowest places, actually, into the stinking abyss. And it's in a town near you. If you are missing that, and you claim you're caring... I have to have ask you to check how caring you really are. This is going on right now. My interest is, comp I have no way to control any of this, but when I see people with potential information to out those that are in it right now because it didn't go with Epstein, I will support that. It's like this Project Veritas. I don't know if they're a political group to hack the, hack the liberals or not, but they're giving, uh, coming from that uh, intention, it looked like, they're bringing out information that may... One of these people can bring an open source documentation and let the world look at this thing and come to the awareness of what may or may not be going on and that I would hope a couple of you come in earnest with the critical mind to tap it all together and bring it in to start making the more uh, directed attack on stopping these kinds of things. And this child abuse thing, trafficking, it's global, it's going on, it's a big deal, it's a big thing, and it's not the only harmful thing in the world either so there's those of you that can't stomach it or don't have a, a dog in the fight or don't think you do or whatever okay maybe that's not for you so i'm talking to those of you we're looking 
for the uh, row box or whatever her name is to, to drop this information that we can look through. It doesn't mean that everybody in this evidence and these uh, information drops means anything. You really have to study this hard. But we have people that can give information that we could stop it. Otherwise, to me, Epstein's dead. Whether he's alive on an island or dead, he's dead. Is nothing we're going to do through Epstein. They've already they've already determined that. That's a dead end road. People ferreting out the ongoing thing is what we're looking for. Ongoing is the abuse to Assange, whatever you think about it. And they're destroying your innocence, and they're destroying your due process, and they're destroying their own precedent to get politics done. Just even revenge against against um, Assange from someone browder now who has influence to make laws which are completely fraudulent from what I can tell. Again, we're looking at this caucusocracy. And so, I, I mean, I don't, I just looked at the chat, I see I see some characterizations. Yeah, I could do that, Java, doc, Java doctor. I could do that, but I, I don't want to limit. Yes, that's a big one. I think it's wrong to focus it right there I do believe, well, just look at the brow at the browder thing, and that label will come attached pretty quickly. So I would rather leave that that way, and we focus in the general. Uh, not that's why I don't talk about a lot of that. I, I think if we start focusing, we forget that there's a players that are not all this. If Assange is a player, he wouldn't be in that status. And so if we don't look at that, if we just put a status, we're looking for the wrong things as well. So I like to keep my options open. Why I typically don't get hone in on any particular characterization of names and peoples, although you hear me say it, say the say these things periodically. Yeah, I'll get the Protocols of the Elders of Zion is probably as, uh, as obvious as I will get to how this thing and where it comes from and why it continues. And that's how they work in, inside your your misperceptions and how they create the misperceptions, the deceptions. They rely on your fallen nature as well. They rely on your misplaced good nature. This is quite the work, actually, in analysis. Well, let me get back to the point. Someone else has gone through, found out in the system, and this is, I can't believe this is not in every state. I see evidence of it everywhere, uh, that the organized criminal syndicate of child trafficking is in your child services system. And the judiciary, which is the Bar Association, Remember, they buy on to promoting sustainable development, which means they're, a, and I think the American Bar is an NGO to the United Nations, which embraces the human rights, which is subject to the needs of the state. And you get a caucus doctor saying, what my needs are is your little girl. I think you could start to see the problem. Because now we're dealing strictly in these extortions and coercions and these, these terrible felony acts just to start with if we didn't get up to the national security problem. And you notice these are so so called so high. These are the lowest life in the these are the, the bottom of the stinking abyss. Utilizing this national security, as I keep telling you, to defeat you. And you're going to have to defeat that somehow. And I've offered some observations on that, and those haven't yet come to test. So I don't I don't really know what to say. To me, it's not really a test. I'll say it, it's a test because it isn't. It's not really out there. But when you tie it together, in other words, in 2013, we sued the people who would be the deciders of the case the judges through their connection to the bar, all right? So they will come back and they will, there's a whole analysis of this, which I won't get into. They will come back and say they're completely independent. The outcome tells us, shows us that they couldn't be. And so that was set into the plan when we did that. But we had to go after the so-called deciders. So when people say, oh, you went into the system to sue the system, no, we actually removed it. We showed that the system could not provide the remedy and that those that are in there are the agents of change that do not follow the law. And they commit, they agreed of the way the process went through. So you got to be, like I say, I talk in some subtlety, and I don't know if people will recognize that yet, and not to dissuade, not, not to say you don't know, but I mean, there's just certain ways to look at this. If you don't have that view, you, you won't, you just won't see it. It just, I don't know what to say. You won't see how this dynamic works. Uh, and and it's out there. It just doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't work quite right, uh, relative to people fixating on what they think should happen, ought to happen, that really isn't going to happen and can't. And this is my um, my sadness for people. We might find them in the so-called patriot group. Okay, they they have a good heart, but they didn't pay attention to some certain details, and they realize they're walking into a buzzsaw, but they didn't step aside that. 
that they didn't bring in something that chewed all the teeth off and then pulled the plug on that buzzsaw. Or when proved the outcome, the, the actual reality of the problem, if they tried to implement that, which is another way to get them. But uh, so anyway, getting into these processes, what I see failing in Assange, what a gentleman saw, he came to the same conclusion, looking at it from a different angle, coming from a totally different path, as I've said. When you get on the on the path of the righteous truth, if you will, the the reality that's going on, it doesn't matter where you come from, you will end up looking at the same stinking abyss that you you, you got inkling was sitting there. And I talk about the negative stuff because that's our, the oppression we live in. I, like I said, I want to be content. I can't be for some reason. I don't know why. There's always going to be someone, as happened to me, I, I got everything all arranged. I was thinking everything cool, everything's right. Picked a bunch of pears. I was going to make some pear wine. Next thing I have is a real estate agent come driving over my pile of pears. Which started a whole new set of things that I had to go through. And so. I didn't ask for that, didn't will it, didn't wish it. And so, this is what happens in the world. And that happened to be another lesson plan, which I learned a whole lot more stuff about property, interestingly. This was before the mining law. And so I was noticing I was on this path as well. I didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't want to be on that path. I've said to people many times, what I know is something that nobody should have to know. Because there should be the system. It's already there. It should be a system I shouldn't have to know more than what it, it is that I, I would be happy. Because there's protections that are supposed to be working. What I know is once if what I'm saying gets back to play, I don't need to know this anymore. What am I saying? I'm saying I don't need to know about that occupier and how to defeat that without getting myself killed. We don't live in that day. I can't say that we never lived in that day. because I can see where we live closer to that day. But when we don't have a population that understands how this has been slowly, incrementally taken away, and it's actually going to move into a completely different, I can say, paradigm, the 20 cents worth, I suppose, uh, I don't even know what to tell you all in the future. Well, I, can, oh, I do know. I'm telling you now. This is, what I'm telling you now will continue to help you many decades into the future until this thing gets right, and then you won't need what I'm saying. I mean, this is the other thing I can see for, I don't know what that sounds like to you, but I know that's the, I know that's the fact. And so here's the thing about process. You have to understand these procedures. Your day, a day may come, you're going to need it. And I don't, you know, a lot of this we focus on courts and all this other stuff. This isn't everything that the government might come against you. The smallest thing starts to work. And if you haven't sat down and read, given you have something that's vulnerable to this type of an approach by the government, if you haven't sat down and read the most basic things about the processing and what goes on, and what to expect and what not to expect, you're not really being responsible to yourself and the property that you have. And I'm talking about really the property in you. And you will be subject to the exploitations of those that test you for what you know, and they find the limit of what you know, and then they take the next step. Given there's a step to take, they take the next step and you lose. And I, when I saw that and what goes on, that's when I started to make importance about why you have to really know what those steps are. And you just telegraph, if you basically, you telegraph, they couldn't go far. Enough. They can't step enough to get beyond what they perceive you know. And so they fall, they step, they stop stepping in that way and they, they'll change, they'll, they'll do something. I mean, I can't tell you what it is. They usually change jurisdictional hats, if you will. And then you have to track that. But that's a different thing. Now, I'm talking way above anybody's head, I suppose. I've said this before, but people just, I'm sure you don't understand what I'm saying. And those that you do, well, what can I say? You're still, we're all still having the problem, and no one's rising to the top to explain uh, their position better uh, than what I'm explaining right now. Again, I, I say that, and I just, my mind just said, but you can't get everywhere. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's the truth. I cannot get everywhere to do any of this stuff. I can only stay where I'm at and do the finite little thing, uh, whatever little things we're doing, which, are, as I said, are quite expensive. It's amazing to watch, and it's a, really a joy in a way to watch people coming along, learning how they've been duped, people in positions of decision, that because they start listening to this objective basis and they start implementing it are noticed for that, and they are given the, the ability, the opportunity to do more faster. So this is an ongoing, we're crawling our way back out. The problem I'm seeing is that it's just not enough of us. There's examples here and there, but not enough. And again, why I, you know, I don't know why the broadcast doesn't get more. Uh, but it doesn't. And so this is part of that. I'm, uh, this is, uh, we're in the world, and that part is of that world. And so uh, we're going to be conditioned to 
uh, to the constraints that it places on by what however you want to uh, consider it physical uh, metaphorical uh, spiritual and as I say that someone said well the devil just doesn't like you and that's and you're going through the medium impliedly is that you're going through the medium of uh, mercury if you will and uh, that's being controlled elsewise and so we're not going to get the coverage and that's a good place to be in a way but it doesn't help people who can't get it or don't have a mind to or close it off like the it continues. Like I have to laugh. Look, somebody goes through tracking me through and puts a down thumb on all the YouTube. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, that's fine. I've asked that that one. I suppose it's the same one because it's everywhere now. One uh, down thumb. And thank you for all the up thumbs. I mean, that's cool. I, you know, twenty to one even. That's pretty neat in some places. Uh, or one hundred percent thumbs up and no downs. That, that's a. I I appreciate that. I hope that's relating to you actually working with the material but the one down thumb let me know I mean like I've said this before you're just hurting well first of all I look at it and I think I can't think anything but negative of that mentality so right off the bat you've got to you're not sitting very well I'm talking to the one who does this or the two or the three whoever they are you're not sitting real well in any kind of a place of a character or knowledge for me and if you uh, down thumbs and it's because of the information wrong or your opinion and you don't explain it, you're not helping anybody else either. I'm, and I'm really kind of looking forward to the day that you get out from underneath your, your shadow and actually start to um, discuss it in a proper way because I know the trolls are there. Uh, but this is the kind of dialogue that we need to move ourselves along. Uh, we have a problem. We shouldn't be fighting amongst ourselves and we shouldn't be uh, saying that there's negative things there unless you have a position that may be better. Uh, or at least to be considered as viable on very first blush. And I don't see a lot of that type of interaction. It's a disappointment because that means we're we're going down the path of Assange. We're going down the path of a dead guy in front of a, a, ga a guy or gal in front of a cop. Uh, the system eating, ju eating, you, tearing you up. My, the my, the, the uh, meat grinder that it becomes. Uh, because you just don't know how to at least make the record to stand aside it and let it run, but you just don't get into that. Uh, you still have to file the paperwork because that's the way this thing works, but you don't have to be the one that stands above the rim of the grinder and, and say and challenge somebody to knock you in because they will. Or CSD that uh, puts on the face that we're here to help, and they defend themselves against we're helping, and in fact it's an organized criminal syndicate for drug, uh, child trafficking. And again, they always have the good stuff up front. That's the other thing that got me. Remember, go back to child trafficking. I've told you they always have the foster family that's perfect. In fact, I think they, they, they make sure they have a couple. And the news always goes to those people. And right behind those is the seedy underbelly. And so, that's again, it's perception management. And they've got your confidence, and you don't say anything about it, and they're hurting us in many, many ways. So here, you get run down. Here's another woman. Here's not, and now, this is an issue. On the surface of it, it's great on the surface, but I wanted to point out something no different. Like, let's look at Assange, but not for Assange. Let's look at the process that's going on. What's, what's, what's not happening or what did happen a uh, woman fights back against charges for using cannabis to treat her illness. The headline, she won. So, fantastic, she won. But you got to go in and read how. And what I found interesting, this is almost a seeding of something, this story, where they talk about her commenting about what she thought about her defense and bringing up the idea of the, uh, the um, uh, nullification uh, that's a dubious way to go when you're looking at a, at a drug, drug charge. But this is her discussion. What I want you to do is go get this link and go, or go find it and go down through and, appear, uh, and see, and then I'll read this part here from it, that this was really understanding the process. And if you start to understand what can and can't be done, you can be prepared before this starts to happen. And so you don't go through this big gyration. You don't necessarily have to do that biting of the bullet and making that compromise because you're looking at an injustice that you know is in a system that is an organized criminal injustice. Now, I've had to make that decision. So I, it's not like I haven't had to do this myself and I had to opt for the for the uh, compromise. I could only liken it to you. It was uh, and I did to the to the, to the the dump truck attorney that was uh, that was uh, talking to me about it. And he was honest about all this stuff, which was uh, refreshing at some level. But I said that when I looked at the whole idea, 
I hadn't done anything wrong. In fact, I did it by the black and white, but I realized the system wasn't going to um, honor that. And this was at the time when they were taking me down for my child services uh, documentary, uh, so there wasn't going to be much challenge on, on that either. But I said I had to rationalize it because it's still a bad taste in my mouth, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do, so I never really ch challenge anybody on a judgment that they had to really think about. I said there's sometimes when the lizard has to lose his tail to the eagle instead of and to live another day and I'll grow the tail back but if I try to fight this the, that legal can take me down and take me out and so that bad taste but there it was so I had to take a heart I had to take a hit I lost my a little bit of my tail but I was I am around another to talk another day with that experience but it sets me it sets me stronger in what I know uh, because of how it went down it wasn't that I was wrong and he admitted to all that he says, but they're not going to let you do this because they can't send the signal to everybody else. And so, I learned that's where you start learning the realities of the injustice of that system. And we can keep playing, complaining about it, or we can start to focus in on it. And I would say, use things like the Assange case again in order to, for those of you on the, on the, uh, in the, across the pond, I'm, I'm sorry, I guess I'm talking to solely, uh, you can start to out this system for it not doing what it does. Uh, it's supposed to be doing things much better and you have an option to go in and do that. But let me see if I can get this right. Uh, the uh, the um, thing here, excuse me, folks. I got it messed up. Well, let me see here. Uh, what was going to happen was that they were going to try a null nullification defense. What the attorney, what she says the attorney noticed was that there was a court case that showed that the way in that state they test for THC, it was not proper evidence, and that a court case had determined that. That the attorney then acted, and this is not she won, this is the ability that someone, that she could have known this too and done the same thing, but there was an attorney there who took the fact that the rules of evidence uh, were such that it wouldn't be evidence, the evidence, supposed evidence against her, that that became the answer. It wasn't all he knew and all these fancy defenses, and it wasn't even avoiding the jurisdiction. It was saying within the jurisdiction, there is no evidence based on this thing. They can't um, do, a, they will not, actually, it was even different, they will not test a misdemeanor charge for the THC content. If it was a felony, they would have. And if you don't understand the system how it works, you can do a lot of extra work than what you need to than to identify these simple little uh, dismissals, I would have to say, of the charges based on the fact there would be no evidence to prosecute. And so if you don't know the system they've set up around you, these little things going on and kind of keep track and this, again, I keep, every time I say that, I say judicial or administrative. This is, there's always things to understand how they're coming to take you down. That you, uh, if you're not paying any attention at all, you will lose. See, they would go through and fight this. They would try to make the evidence. The jury would see the evidence or the judge would use it because no one objected. And they would get, this lady would be put in jail for a year with the attorney. I think the integration of this client looking at it and the guy cared, the, the, This maybe one guy that cared, and I have to say I've been involved in a situation where I did find another. There's like, like four attorneys in my life that were lawyers. They did law. And my hat's off to those. They're so far and few in between. This might be another lawyer like that that took on the rule set and understood, well, they don't even have an evidentiary body to do this. Why? She's actually presumed innocent, isn't she? So I've got this theme here, the presumption of innocence, going. We find it's internationally recognized. Assange doesn't get it. No one around him is doing the paperwork to point that out. One woman goes in, and on, uh, despite what she wants to do, it's actually a condition where the state policy is not to test uh, the evidentiary knee, uh, concentration level for a THC. She didn't win. They just charged her on something that they had no ability to go through due process and get from her. And so we're back to due process as well. I tell you, the two things that you have may be down to just these two. One is a presumption of innocence, and then the other is 
is the due process that's required. And so you have to be cognizant of that. Once you understand some of these things, it's, uh, you can kind of go, uh, kind of, you do, is how we do it. You find out what they can and can't do, and then you go through the path that's left. Because if you're innocent, that path is there. If you're scamming, they'll take you out. It's, they almost love that part, what, uh, the, the, the fool. But when you're not, even if you have a question, you can bring a plausible construction of, in this case, inside a jurisdiction, an avoidance, and, or, well, inside a jurisdiction is a dismissal, a defense. It invalidates the prosecution. Why? Because they have the burden. Remember that other case I was talking to you about where the guy gets beat down? Instead of talking to the judge, you got to talk to the who has the burden on the case. And the burden on the case in the state is to have evidence of THC content, and the way the state r policy runs is they don't do anything other than misdemeanors. If you missed the trick there, uh, you try to defend, you would lose. But, in fact, there was actually no evidence for a misdemeanor. A felony, you're going to have that test. You're going to have that test in evidence. Well, you got to make sure it is, but this is the point of asking for the, uh, the discovery, right? And so, again, I know I talk about stuff that maybe most people want to avoid, uh, but to me, having this knowledge makes me look into the news cycle and say, okay, well, here's the, the, the world of Kakistan, the world of injustice that's been set up by people that live right down the street from me is extensions of what I see. And how are they hurting other people are probably uh, most likely how they're also hurting you. And I've found this to be consistent, why we can defeat the uh, gangrene terrorists, uh, how we can defeat environmentalists, uh, what we might call today the liberal or progressive mindset, uh, the in, no mind, it's an insanity, uh, is, is there's an objective basis that you bring. And there's certain rules to follow, and, and I found those are advantageous to understand. And they remove the workload, a lot of the workload, uh, because you have this kind of a story, and I know Grimner was reporting on it, uh, NYPD brags on Twitter of major pot bust that turned out to be legal hemp. They make stuff up, folks. This is what you're up against. Now, what I saw in this case, and not to, uh, I don't know, just uh, different different looks, I guess, at the same story from uh, between anybody who would report on it, I noticed that the company itself was complaining and wanting people to write out, which is fine, you can write out to the police department, about how it was legal hemp. My thought right there was, why are they, well, yeah, it's okay to get the word out, but why aren't they moving in equity action to have that hemp returned? Because they weren't supposed to steal it. That's a collateral attack on their theft, which they're going to claim was uh, was was a uh, evidence. They can still go back and get it back if it's if it's going to suffer if it's going to suffer some harm. But see, we don't see that part in these stories. We don't see that people are not helpless, and we see people themselves not making the suggestion themselves. And so, notwithstanding the a AQ uh, minus AQ I, uh, ID, minus eighty IQ referencing here, uh, proving another point I've made forever. Uh, the mentality of these people is gone. Uh, they have no sense of, of law, no sense of morals, no sense of even doing a proper investigation, which I caught f funny. Boy, someone wrote up a sentence uh, that they twittered out about the persistence and the, poly and the, and the uh, I can't remember now what they said. It was the persistence of, this, of the investigation, all that. Someone polished that sentence and was waiting forever to throw that in a Twitter. And when they used it, it was perfect. When they used it, the whole thing backfired because that's the quality uh, that they were railing was the pinnacle of what their activity was. These uh, minus 80 IQ mentalities that are working with this are going to just show how bad the entire thing is. Uh, that I, the reflection of a response by people to their property being stolen like this did not make it in the article either. And I so inside the article is a silence uh, that the people that own the the product were not uh, were not helpless. And although it's a, I'm going to repeat, although okay, go to Twitter to get a a well, groundswell of response back to these I, minus 80 IQ cops. Uh, who don't have the psychological stability to do more than that. Yes, that's okay, but the actual law would be to bring equity. Right? I hope you got that trick. It's not law you're bringing. You're bringing the equity, and you're bringing the harm to the product that was the right of the owner that was wrongly confiscated. Right? 
you're not helpless. You do have to go another step, and maybe you don't get remuneration, but if you attach on an equity suit the compensation for not doing that again, you can teach New York, maybe they need to hire a little more educated people. Maybe they need to be more psychologically stable than stand proud with these long packages of stringy <laughs> hemp. <laughs> uh, any rate, well, yeah, some of this does crack me up, but it's, it's serious what we're allowing to go by and what the people being harmed are not bringing up for themselves. Uh, the lady who won the cannabis, not so much. But she's doing it for her health. They don't care, see, folks. I keep trying to tell you. You really have to take all this into, into take stock in all this. If you want to take a stock market, this is the stock you take. This is what you put together, that they don't care. They don't care to care, and there's no reason for it. And yet there's these rules that will work uh, that you can, uh, you could be looking in that state on this misdemeanor. So if you knew that, you could keep yourself under the misdemeanor and look very carefully that the legislature doesn't change that. Because that's how I told you that they do it. When they have a find a hole in their oppression uh, that they can't oppress you, they, they go ahead and come out and they patch that part of the part of the net. All right? That's what I stopped doing that paperwork. I just stopped writing paperwork that found holes. It was they're there, but uh, why when they're gonna plug it up? And so I say well, I better not do it. And we better go look at another way because this is just a self-mending, um, a self-healing parasitic amoeba. And who's underneath it all? The bar association. And don't and don't forget they got their law schools that are all teaching the uh, teaching the the way. Well, that's, they call it the third way in the UN. So uh, New York uh, brags on Twitter for hemp. Uh, hemp has been uh, it it falls underneath that exclusion under the federal law. And what are we talking there but commerce, right? So we're in commerce there. And he can, they, that company could protect themselves, but they complained to Twitter and uh, not did it conjunctively with a, an illegal action to get the pot back and make a big stink about that, how stupid that was, right? So we, we're allowing, I look at them as opportunities that uh, we failed to um, uh, failed to use in order to, educate people in a bigger context. And in this case, they have to get their their uh, hemp back, which I was kind of surprised too. You and I, I, Someone needs to explain to me, how do you ship 106 packages through now a FedEx who works with the government to destroy you in their shipping, if you haven't figured that out? But how do they send 106 packages of hemp and make any money? Is a uh, mind blower to me, because with all the pictures I saw about hemp, you needed fields and fields and equipment and big facilities in order to do enough hemp to do any kind of any kind of business. How how is it they can do 106 small packages and it actually pay for itself is is really I'm missing I'm missing that boat big time because I don't see it. At any rate, something's going on there and somebody something's valuable about it. And so these people want the government wants to make up a story and this is what I keep telling you. It's not that you're not doing something innocently because these people were. You get caught up in a nonsense, and if, even if you don't die from it, well, business-wise, these people are in trouble if they can't get their, their shipment back, right? And yet I saw no, no attempt, no interest in the story that they're going to or did. And that thing should have been a, no more than a 15-day process if you look at these processes. If you think these are years and years and years, no. Equity actions happen when you, when you, can, uh, when you have no adequate remedy to get it back, and they didn't have the right, and it's going to be detrimental the court can enter the status quo of your innocence and your use immediately. Normally it's about a 15-day process. If it goes that far, it can happen as quick as two or three. And in that case, it's more the extremely perishable stuff uh, that can happen. And that could actually be losing a deal if you don't get it shipped out immediately, too. So I don't know why people doesn't, don't, don't, I don't why see evidence that that's possible to give us some inkling that you aren't helpless, folks, is I guess what I look at here always. We're not helpless. We kind of make ourselves helpless. We telegraph that we're helpless, and we're we're not helping to um, bring bring that point out that we're not, and give evidence uh, examples uh, of what you can possibly do. Like I see the silence in the Assange thing. I keep going back to that. That's just a glaring silence. I mean, it's a deafening silence. And so I see. Oh, look over. Cowboy Tech saying CBD. I, I don't. I understand that's the, the content of the fiber. I don't know that the money's in the oil, the concentrate, not the fiber. You'd, you'd need you'd need mountains of the stuff to be making oil from that. So anyway, I, I don't know. It's just a fascinating to me. 106 bundles of, of legal legal hemp uh, gets confiscated, and they're not doing an equity action to take it away. 
And how can 106 uh, paying for the shipping on that alone blows me away on the cost, let alone making money on it. And so it's just something I'm not into. Uh, I haven't been into it. I just look at it from uh, what this notice to us is. And hopefully, well, if you don't listen behind the woodshed, you may take a different inference. And what I'm trying to explain to you that there was something left out of that story that you can actually move forward with. And uh, uh, it, it, it makes the whole it really makes the whole difference, and it puts the problem back on the government itself. They're not going to be walking around so strong on that anymore. If you, if the first, the first company or man or woman that does that, it start, it, it, I think it eliminates it. Especially if you do the way the equity side compensation, you tie into their budget so they don't do it again to someone else. Uh, they start to learn real fast. Uh, anyway, so escalating millennial health problems raise economic concerns. It caught my eye when I heard that that woman got attacked for using her marijuana for her health issues. And what was her health issues but to get off the pharmaceutical opioids? And she didn't win because of that. She won because of a technicality in the processing of the evidence, right? So be careful on that story about the win. But the point was she was using this to help herself off opioids. We're supposed to say the government wants, it's supposedly all over this, to help stop the opioid uh, epidemic, that the pharmaceuticals are, are helping to foster and encourage. And, yes, we have some imports of coming from China. Uh, apparently that all just keeps going. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but uh, you cannot use, because of legalization or decriminalization, you're not still allowed to actually use a plant uh, for your health. The government doesn't make a, a profit that way, or its, or its holdings don't, these companies, corporations. And so pharma giant fails to mention 18 years that it was uh, using, helped fund a key patent used by drugs that the United States government patent was uh, held to generate $53 billion while you try to go out and do something for yourself and get beat up for it. But for an anomaly, a technicality in the rules, uh, you would not be able to uh, treat yourself. Whether I say cure or not is irrelevant. You treat yourself. Make your decisions. The government pays on top of all this to harm you. It uh, doesn't tell you that there's a patent, which the way the law, if I understood the way the law works, they're supposed to give, um, the price is supposed to be way more reasonable when a company uses a government-held patent, which you could see, that would be kind of cool when you do it that way. Not the military side where they use it against you, but actually they put the money in so the public now benefits, given there's a benefit to this uh, so this pharmaceutical, uh, but they were supposed to not charge quite so much, and a lot not so much. And so this, combined with the lady trying to get beat down, trying to treat her own opioid epidemic uh, problem, her addiction, and it was working, uh, she gets beat down, and then I see this story, Wondering, who do you think, folks? Do you think maybe this is going to be the fact when you see that the pharma isn't controlled to use stuff that's in the public realm, even though it's it's held by the government as a patent, that the that the exploitation of the money, the the, the profit is driving more than the rights of the people. That we read this this uh, title, escalating millennial health problems raise economic concerns. You think, folks, when they're this type of organized criminal pharmaceutical syndication and the government allowing it is is in play and so one side it's going to be more expensive just because of that and you think that's the only one obviously not and do you think they don't do this in other places obviously not and yet then we see the other part of this escalating millennial health problems I had to ask what from what and why now, I've, had, I've encountered some big health things in my life. One of them about killed me. It would have. So I'm not immune, completely... Well, I was so healthy that I was able to survive. It literally, the doctor told me I was going two and a half weeks, which mostly which kills people off in four days. So I was pretty healthy, I have to say that. But this thing about killed me. It would have killed me without Western medicine antibiotic intervention. I wouldn't be here without that. I've talked to you all, mentioned that before. But otherwise, I was pretty healthy, and I think I'm still pretty healthy. And when I see the escalating millennial health problems, I'm wondering, what have they done since my time, when I was younger, that's causing this? That's now, the system is exploiting. In other words, you're looking like, it's like a binary weapon to me. The millennials, I don't know what they think in their mind and what they do in the mimetic, the mimetic life, or whatever, they think that they got it all handled like all we might all did at the same time when we went through there but they're not aware apparently that they have a failing health condition generally 
that's being exploited. Like I tell you, it's done. That's just how they get it done. And so if you're a millennial and you wonder why you're not feeling so good, chronic health problems. Apparently it's big enough to make a story today. The cost makes the economic concerns, yes, that's part of the plan of destroying you. When they get you up into old age, that's how they steal the last bits of your money. Uh, your property, especially with uh, elder care. The state steps in and takes your estate. And so there's a very narrow way, I think, to challenge that uh, because they're not supposed to be using the services of government to steal back the property the Congress gave to people. If you go back to the patent law, but no one's going to bring that up. I'll just mention to it here. No one's going to be, it may take decades for people to come and, and uh, understand what I've been saying about how to start to combat a lot of this stuff. But uh, escalating millennial help. Millennials that listen to me, pay attention. They, they win on both sides. Where your health is going, I don't know. I, it's totally beyond me to understand. I, I was maybe very, very fortunate. And I mean, generally, I think I have been in one regard, but not to this level where it's a general malaise or a disease in the society that's being exploited and the government allows it. I'm asking you with this story, protect look to protect yourself it's not just from the memes you can laugh at on the internet it's not just the things that you don't feel are cool out in the world these people are after you they're they're doing things in the world with this technology as well you can call this tinfoil hat whatever you want go look at the same patents that the government owns relative to how they interfere with your life I tell you this was happening a lot longer before even me looking at the uh, the what do you, the binary weapons, we, the main example I keep focusing on was the thing that happened in San Francisco, utilizing a very special high-powered transmitter, a television transmitter. They sprayed, inoculated the population with the viruses to check this, how this would work, and then they waited some time, inoculated the population, like they do with vaccines and you get the shedding, and then they turned on that Class B transmitter with a certain frequency, and they activated that thing. And it made the population sick. Pretty simple. Really neat. Did you forget about that? They've come up with more technology since then, folks. And I think the millennial, now this is evidence of that. Is a, might be a little paranoid. Yeah, well, your health is the only thing you got, so maybe you should be a little bit more um, strenuous in your inter inter interrogation of what your problems might be. Uh, more you, I'll just read the first paragraph. More you millennials of the U.S. are suffering the chronic health problems, potentially restraining the life economic potential of generations of young adults. That's what it's all about. You're going to live in austerity however they get it on you. Wherever you go, this is the, seems to be the system. And I'm having a hard time finding evidence to the contrary is my problem with this and trying to be neutral to it. And so what have I said as a response to some of this? You start to have to, you get real knowledge about something, you don't get to bring your opinion, you get the facts, you, need, you bring the real science to it, even if there is no science, you still show the harm, you bring the obligations. However, I, I go through pull this stuff together for you. One of the things you can start doing when you start seeing this stuff is you can work even counter to the federal government, but you got to do it locally. How you do it in the state is up to each state. I'm not quite sure. Some have the ability refer referendum, uh, some have initiative, some don't. Uh, some have both. Some have tertiary where you go to the representative. You can do all three. You have to move. If you don't, you millennials in, the, in Generation Z, if you don't get involved, I don't like this at all. I really don't like suggesting this. I don't see a better option. Uh, the way the infiltration is coming and the reach that this thing has when it went technological, technocracy, if you will. The uh, first indication maybe the 5G radiation issues, and there's more of that stuff, not just 5G. There's more out there uh, that you have to step in and start to control uh, there is still this limited government. What we didn't realize is how limited we still have to make it. And that was another clue. You know, I, so I look at the things like the lady uh, with the with the testing and doing the opioids and uh, the Assange and this, the due pre presumption of innocence. You know, you have to maybe write a law that says you're presumed innocent even against the probable cause. Like you saw the Lula, where you're in the, you still have until the final say of the final court by the final uh, option that they've offered in this uh, supposed uh, uh, this fairy tale called justice until that final act you are considered and presumed innocent really needs to be asserted locally uh, so what what do you do I've said you got to figure out ways to make local rules or policies or state laws or rules 
policy to stop the government, no matter where you find it, make a law to stop it. I ran across a website. Uh, well, first I went website. One website, which uh, this is weeks long ago now, uh, that Texas. Uh, oh no, that this one's not weeks long. The weeks long is before Texas voters approved constitutional ban on state income tax. Should, should no, there's, it doesn't answer the question because they go after property tax, which I have a big problem with. But the point is, the people voted out income tax. Why don't you go and do the rest of the bad things? Vote out everything that's bad. Vote out every action taken that becomes bad. Vote out every presumption that has become bad, that the system and the organized criminals will use against you. Why aren't you stepping up as your own con con responsible control and check on the government to make a law that, that outlaws and bans income tax, maybe even property tax, uh, whatever tax, whatever. Let the government have the problem. Uh, try to figure out, you want to constrain government? Stop feeding the beast. It'll survive. It's going to survive in a place that's supposed to be surviving. Small. Why did it take Texas so long to stop an income tax? Why do you let it go to property tax? Why any of the taxes? You all people, taxes theft? Go stop it. Texas just did it on income tax. Now, that's going to be interesting to see how they define it, right? I, you just go inside the state law. The state law defines what income is. And you're not going to find out it's nothing what you all think about it. <laughs> And so, income tax, just voted it out. How's that? Why aren't you voting everything else out? And so then I got another website, and uh, chronology, the chronology was interesting. Uh, I got it out of time here, but right before that came, and now in effect, Oklahoma law decriminalizes CBD despite ongoing FDA prohibition. So that's a lesser of two evils. Decriminalization is not what you want to do. You just want to stop regulating it. You want to leave it, go natural, make it bring it back into its lawful stature and recognize that it's just a plant. Uh, but but to uh, mitigate the harm of a prohibition, the people in, or in Oklahoma decriminalize CBD, notwithstanding what the feds say. And why don't you do that, those of you that have the problem? Texas, we're back to Texas. Voters, I'm just going through some lists here I saw. It happened to come up. I'm not even studying it. Just noticing, I've said you have to go make laws. Why aren't you doing the laws that stop all the stuff that you this claim is so bad. It's right here that the people are doing it starting. It's more to be done. Texas voters approved state constitutional amendment to facilitate the use of bullion depo depository. Facilitate the use of the bullion depo depository. It's cool, but be careful. This is like a half step, maybe even a full step back. This is only regards to those taxable items. And so if you outlaw that tax and then all of a sudden now you get back to your lawful money and this is starting to go do that where you can use the the bullion uh, relative to um, a lawful money kind of condition. Otherwise, it's treated like a taxable property. How they do that, uh, no one challenges that as well as it's beyond me. And I wouldn't have really appreciated that until you get a mining claim and you realize that gold is not, uh, you, they can't touch it. It doesn't come out of the same system. So when I'm talking to you about going to lawful money, this is no joke. I tell you in a, back, in a simple way, the Fed takes it, uh, lawful money as an asset, not a debt. They can't manipulate uh, an asset. They can only manipulate the debt system. Now to, to what? The, the, um, the fraud that, that they use since the 2008 uh, crisis. Using what? Derivatives. More fraud. Uh, so, Texas voters approved the state constitution to facilitate the use of the bullion depository. What did that do? Stop the tax on it. Where are you all to not go insist and get pushed through and get people into office that are going to do these things to shut and turn down all the power of the government? I've told you this was a time coming. If this isn't making it more obvious uh, that it can be done and ought to be done and has been done, I really don't know what to say. What's everyone's complaint? If taxes theft, go vote it out of existence. Well, what are you going to do for my roads? Well, go call a miner. Maybe he'll put it, tell them where there's a deposit. He'll probably make the road for himself, and you'll, then you can use it. See, these are all spacious little positions. Who cares? You either find the taxation is a problem and it's a theft, and you will work against that. So simple as to outlaw it, ban it. Uh, or you're just a hypocrite. I'll just put it that way. Because I don't really don't know what else to call y'all. I see all this stuff. It drives me nuts. I see all this power, all this energy, all this effort that could go in, and nothing pops out. And I'm wondering, and then, so there's what? 
Are we surprised that health care is going to cost when we don't stop the theft? Uh, we're we're going to worry about the we're worried about uh, worried about ta taxation being a, a theft or an extortion as it actually is in law. Go read uh, Title 42 U.S.C. 1981, folks. It's right there. It's uh, extortion. It's legal extortion. You all agreed to that, and so what can I say? You want to keep it going? Go ahead or outlaw it. I don't know why this is, when I saw this years and years ago, I had to shake my head how stupid I was to think that we really could control the limit of the government. And when you start to realize, let me want to throw one little aspect here about my roads. When you realize a lot of the funding anymore is paying the special interest to implement the agenda against you, your government's not so big anyway, because that's all theft money from you to begin with. And they go directly to the property people, for the property owners for that as well. Two violations. Stop it. Vote it out. Ban it, folks. You want to stop the problem with CBDs and hemp and THC? Ban the prosecution of it. How's that? And then remember, what they're talking about at the federal level is in commerce. What you're doing it for is in production, the thing that the state has to honor. That survives a challenge. Now, who's going to make the challenge? All the, all the thieves that survive when it, when it was uh, put in prohibition or de decriminalization or legalization. That's when the ones that are going to complain. Who cares, right? So uh, I was excited a bit to see kind of neat stuff coming down. Maybe not exactly like the decriminalization of CBD in Oklahoma because that's still a problem, but okay, you're taking a step in the right direction. This gives us the indication you can actually change the law to a better place. When Texas outlaws income tax, what is the excuse around the country? Ban it all. Ban it everywhere. Anything that becomes an imposition. And if you look, listen to what I'm saying about where you come from for the foundation of that, there's no way that anybody external to it can attack it. I'm talking about your law of the land, the land, the, the production from it. The interference by the fact of the taxation which uses those funds to interfere with that, which I can show you if you would agree to work it out that the extension of a policy at the tertiary government is affecting the land use uh, production of even you in your backyard and your chicken, that that's a, that's a crime, uh, that's a war crime, that's sabotage. Maybe we have a better thought in our brain about why we have to better start, we better start f banning this thing in a time of military occupation. And if I, I just said it, uh, my mind said, did you, did, have you, did you finally get a little bit right there, the method to my madness here? That there's a po process that we're just oblivious, that's there, that we're oblivious and not utilizing. There's a weapon that we can fight this war, this occupation against us, and the people are silent to it. And I'm not having to go to the Second Amendment one to pull this off at all. I just need you all to start thinking clear and start to realize that the government's limited when you limit it. Otherwise, it takes every opportunity to expand itself in, the, in a natural, I mean, the natural governmental sense. And then you have this encroachment that we've identified, which is the UN-style type stuff, which blows all of that constraint away underneath the guidance of the rule of the governance. No government whatsoever. And so I talked about what I was talking. I've been talking about this military thing that we're, is it occupies kind of silent to us all. The Civil War never went away. You want to believe a Civil War is coming? It's just going to get you to fight amongst yourself because the federal government's not going to get involved in this one. They're going to they're going to be the third party with justification to stop you. And you should turn around, and got together, and, and and ended that dang thing and did the kind of stuff I've been talking about. And stop and limited the government that we said was there to limit, not let it get beyond it. Uh, but uh, we have this little thing coming down now. As I said, there the military consequence expands itself. It starts making itself present. You can be completely innocent and be involved in it. Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, Cowboy Tech sent me this link last week, uh, right after the broadcast. There's nothing I could do with it until uh, maybe today. I was talking about a um, the new and improved SWAT that allows. This is how you you can tell you're in, it says, an evidence of the military consequence when they use military things. Or I said military time, uniforms, uh, ranks. I've talked about all this stuff, and all this other stuff. Well, here's a new one coming down. Unlawful arrests are tactical reasons of the new exigent circumstance. It's not true that it's an exigent, exigent circumstance, actually. 
It's an excuse that they admit an excuse that they say they come and stop you for the tactic, a tactical reason, not a lawful reason, while they're doing something somewhere else. The story is someone videotaping from their porch a SWAT team on someone who they've apparently got behind the truck, a whole bunch of SWAT people in their SWAT costumes, and uh, he's standing there on the porch, and I can't remember if he makes a question or not, but next thing he knows, he's got three SWAT people come flying into his yard, uh, take him down and arrest him for being there. And their excuse wasn't that they had probable cause to arrest him. It was a tactical reason why they did that. If you don't think you're living in a military consequence, and they're making it more and more obvious. Now, uh, one of my side note observations, I was looking at this video, I, a little bit, I got a little bit hung up on the fact that there's a lot of viewers, a lot of followers, and the guy, these people that are in commenting, and these people, this guy that's giving us the, what was that, the, is that the master's report? I found that fascinating. Master's report, the master's report telling you stuff, and it was, it was absent, an acknowledgement and awareness that that you're looking at a military operation. Everyone is so whether or not it's by plan and they want to keep the the lid on, or you're completely not wanting to agree that this is a military occupation and they're just bringing it on. The more you deny that, the longer and faster, the longer it's going to take to do something and the faster they're going to bring this on that you may not be able to respond to this. But you, they don't have, apparently have to have, well, until it's challenged, they do not have to have a lawful reason. They can have a tactical reason to arrest you. This is um, quite the story. Uh, so I, don't, I didn't get too much more into it. If there's no one going to do the right view if there's no one going to address it in the right way, it's lost to us, and that thing is coming on to us. Like I said, hundreds of hundred thousand or so more viewers, followers, and no answer in this master's report. They don't want to, you know. It's like I was looking at whether the guy is doing this on purpose or not. They're not telling you you have an option that needs to now be engaged. Uh, and and they didn't even thought about how to even begin to that I, I attempt to explain uh, here behind the woodshed weekly, weekly, weekly. And so again, uh, I just wonder why people, more people don't listen uh, and engage on a continuing basis uh, behind the woodshed. And again, I'm not here to beat on you or do whatever. I'm here to explain you need to be the one bringing that uh, that government child behind the woodshed and, and putting that government child in its place and teaching it a principle or two for a future action. And that kind of describes what an equity action is, isn't it? So I try to be consistent here. I think I am. It's just I don't get the uh, people that want to listen and then follow through. It's not just listening. It's not just being questioning. It's not thinking it's a good or whatever idea. It's listening to it, put it together, and then applying it. And applying it in a way, in a substantial way, uh, that we start protecting ourselves from this, uh, I don't know, you know, it's just a crime. I just see it's a crime against us. It's a military occupation. You see the evidence. You know them when you see them, folks. Lieber Code, Article 1, and then go down to Section 10. There's another important one right there. One in, uh, Article 1 and Article 10. Article 1, you know them when you see them. When they tell you they're doing tactical responses and not law responses, believe them. International law says you have to because the court's doing it too. And so I won't go down there because it brings up a lot of people get all triggered when I mention the courts. Oh, you can't go to the... Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you've got to bring that out too. It's exactly what I've been telling you. How to do that. Uh, exclusive. This is how the U.S. military's massive face, facial, recognition, re, facial recognition system works as we move on through the intelligence gathering that's in your face, <laughs> literally here, and uh, people are only wrecking, oh, this is the facial record. No, this is now a connection to the United States' military massive global facial recognition system. And what, so we tie the r rule of law and democracy together with all this, and the military consequence on the globe, you're looking about intelligence ga gathering on a global basis. I mean, at some point in the recent past, I would have been blown away. Now it's like, okay, there's really no excuse not to have it, and we're letting it go away from us. This, this story here explains how massive this thing really is and where everywhere you go becomes this data collection point, and they build these so-called dossiers, I assume, they can call use that word, in order to, that's yours. It'll be tied in in a military perspective through a social credit 
Okay, it's all it's a stacked thing. Uh, you're actually seeing you're not seeing they're telling us the military, but you won't see the military. It's like you don't see the military working. You all identified in the gold fringe flag, but you don't and you rail against it, but you don't understand that that's not what you attack. But that's the evidence of it. So I've told you how to handle that uh, in past broadcasts. You got to be careful on that one because it's, this is a, we're, you're in a war, right? So uh, what's the consequences in a war? Yeah, that's what we're dealing with, and it's, I try not to get too hot on that. But that's what people are walking into, and I'm uh, really hesitate about giving you, oh, there's a machine gun nest, go storm it. Uh, no, no, we got to do this thing a whole lot different. Anyway, but here's the evidence of it. They talk about over the 15 years, last 15 years, uh, folks, I have a hard time believing it wasn't before that, but that doesn't matter. Facial recognition is all over the place. I've got so many tabs talking about it, i got to maybe get rid of them all. I mean, it's just ubiquitous now throughout the all the places this stuff is. The military's massive facial recognition system works is the title of this thing. They explain the global reach. It goes to your D. Well, let I me mean, the, the images, faces, irises, fingerprints, and DNA, biometric dragnet of anyone who comes in contact with the United, United States military abroad, it says here. Then it explains it's not just limited to abroad. I'm not talking about a lady. I'm talking about you being across the waters outside the border. This thing is directed inside already. Okay, I've been talking about this and telling you uh, there's more underneath this than they're talking on the surface. There's a bigger system tied together. So what, uh, so, okay, so we have DNA. Then what came a story that popped up? Just a quick thing uh, here. Uh, this is a, a CRISPR uh, story, uh, C-R-I-S-P-R, gene editing technology. If weaponized, there is no defense was a, a, t a, a title, very short story, story, talking about the government, the DARPA, concerned that if they weaponize, if someone weaponizes this technology, they want an antidote, if you will, for it. Well, folks, CRISPR itself, the C-R-I-S-P-R, that's already a weapon. And so this story is like a, it's maybe someone's observation, but as far as DARPA is concerned, this is already a weapon. They're just trying to make you kind of get you off the fact about that, at least in my interpretation. And I answered through a Twitter, there is no defense now against the unpredictable consequences of this technology. And the latest new and improved is no different. There's a new and improved one that they've come up with uh, that they claim is uh, uh, less damaging and less causing of these, uh, these unintended consequences. My interpretation of this is this is a man-made gene editing, may be an actual quantum weapon already. Similarly, as dogs may be seen as organic AI, artificial intelligence, they're pattern recognition systems. The quantum nature of the quantum, as they describe it, is Schrodinger's kitty. All of you are Schrodinger's kitty. Are you alive or are you dead? It depends on when we look at you. All right, that's what this unintended consequence, they can't predict it. That's what this develops. It's as if they say, well, we're, we're, we've got AI, um, a quantum, quantum, but in fact they're inventing it by, their, by what they're uh, making up, man-made. Uh, there's no defense against CRISPR now. What's DARPA telling us? Uh, I think it's a, it's a distraction. They, they, they want to promote that it's okay, but it is already a weapon. It's maybe at least a, pri a, di a primary weapon, if not a binary and whatever, because of this technology that they have. And we'll give you on quickly to this ID. While you slept, government created I internal passports, real ID. Folks, this is the uh, last year, I think, before they initiate real ID, and that is what they're now calling internal passports. But uh, while you slept, folks, behind the woodshed, we'd never sleep. I've been telling you about all this and the consequence and all this time, and the delays are up. Real ID is coming in, and what do they do? They collect everything you just heard the military is, circ is trying to collect f uh, from you externally if you go abroad internally, which we've already known they're doing. But remember, this is the transportation security agency they're talking your real ID is through your driver's license and that is commerce and so if, if you don't get what I've been saying you won't have a word in your mouth on how you're going to avoid it and I can already hear the claim but I need my driver's license to go to work yes but that's the problem and you haven't found that or, or asserted that they didn't have the right to do that and what they did to you was a crime and you have a presumption of innocence against the gathering of what they are calling an internal passport which gathers everything the military's been needing that you heard on the prior story report Yes, Grimner, dead cat bounce. <laughs> Schrodinger's kitty. 
So, folks, the real ID stories, they're a little bit of a problem for me because they're not telling you that they're implementing it as a crime against you, and you're not saying anything about it. You'll have every excuse to continue it, which I've explained, even if you have them, how you might be able to do that without any jeopardy to you, which is the main the main thing, objective in a battlefield. Don't get wounded and don't get hurt, which I attend to, attempt to do all the time here. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com. Appreciate it all what there is. Come here and uh, be able to broadcast to everybody. Thank you to everybody who uh, uh, interacts with the broadcast, whether uh, clicks or advances uh, forwards or whatever you do, sends it out, emails, whatever. Thank you for doing all that. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.